Here are the stories we're covering this week in the Category 5.TV newsroom. The problems with the Windows 10 October 2018 update just keep on rolling in as users are now complaining of faulty zip file extractions, broken fonts, and iffy brightness controls. Linux founder Linus Torvalds has returned from a month of reflection to his job as chief developer of the widely used operating system. Dyson, the UK-based company best known for its vacuum cleaners, has chosen to build its new electric car in Singapore. And a 16-year-old boy from California was the surprise winner of the grand final of the classic Tetris World Championship in Oregon. These stories are coming right up. Don't go anywhere. This is the Category 5.TV Newsroom, covering the week's top tech stories with a slight Linux bias. Jeff Weston, yeah, man. you're building a brand new beautiful website. What? Aren't you? No. Am I? Oh, you're a terrible actor. What? This is where acting comes into play. Oh, I didn't know we were acting. You're supposed to act. Okay, fair enough. All right. yeah, I'm building a really cool website. Are you building a really cool website? Just because Jeff is confused doesn't mean you have to be. Visit cat5.tv slash dreamhost to sign up for unlimited web hosting for your website with unlimited email accounts, MySQL databases, the latest version of PHP, WordPress, and more, and even a free domain name registration. It's less than $6 per month, so sign up today. cat5.tv slash dreamhost. I'm Sasha Rickman, and here are the top stories we're following this week. The problems with the Windows 10 October 2018 update just keep rolling in as users are now complaining of faulty zip file extractions, broken fonts, and iffy brightness controls. The infamous file deletion bug and blue screen reports have drowned out other issues somewhat. So allow us to present a roundup that could have been titled, Should have kept the testing team on, eh? The issue with the zip file extraction first appeared in a Reddit thread as users queried some odd behavior f when files were being copied out of an archive. Previous versions of Windows would show a warning if those files already existed in the destination. In Windows 10 1809, nothing. It's a pretty nasty issue. A user could copy a file out of an archive assume the copy was successful, and then delete the zip file. However, if a file with the same name already exists, Windows 10 would have silently done nothing. Less severe but highly annoying for affected users is a problem where some Unicode, Unicode characters are failing to show up correctly. Software featuring certain characters will instead see plain rectangles. It looks like there's a problem with font substitution, linking or file back in Windows 10 where the operating system replaces missing characters from one font with those from another. Except in version 1809, this does not seem to be happening reliably. In a simple test in Notepad, for example, it has been demonstrated that while 1803 is able to use a star character, 1809 shows a rectangle for the same font. Some apps, such as Office, appear to be unaffected, but other Windows apps that depend on the OS to perform font substitutions are struggling. And finally, an issue in 1809 is causing the screen to fail to dim or brighten as the user presents the hardware keys on the Surface Go, and possibly others as the Dell XPS has also been shown to have the issue. A restart appears to fix the problem briefly, as does disabling and re-enabling the graphics driver. Some users have reported success in manually installing drivers from Intel. Most are suggesting rolling back your OS to 18.03, but if you're unable to do that, unfortunately, you'll just have to wait until Microsoft fixes these new issues, and hopefully their fix won't cause your computer to blue screen. This has been a rocky month for Microsoft with yeah. the updates on Microsoft o Windows. October's been a little rough for Microsoft. I think what is really frustrating about this from a user's perspective is that it's really difficult to turn off Windows Update and Windows 10. It's impossible. It kind of seems that way because you'll turn it off and then it will re-enable itself. And mm -hmm. then you'll find a new registry key that you can turn off and it will re-enable itself. Wow. That's what we found. It's also hard to trust updates when it's an update that causes the problem, right? Like, so if I have an update that is an issue and then they say, okay, we have a fix for this update and yeah. then they do another update and it causes another issue, which is... You know, something that's been happening. So which, which issue do you prefer? Yeah. Do you prefer to have your files deleted or 
Right. And this blue screen. To be honest, like this whole font substitution thing, that could be a pretty big deal if you're printing documents that have, you know, very particular characters. Yeah, and I use there. Unicode on occasion. I think where it would really be noticeable is if you were using foreign characters. So, you know, mm -hmm. we think of the example of, you know, little graphic characters like, like a webding or something like that. But that's not really a big issue compared to if you're using foreign characters that are a part of a particular font set mm -hmm. and the substitution just turns them into squares. I know. We encounter that now with French characters here in Canada. So it's that can be very, very frustrating. Quebec. Yeah. You think of Quebec with the accent over the E. Well, that's a Unicode character. Right. So I'm going to put my hot dog hat on right now. All right. To ask a simple question, so what's the um, 1809 versus 1803? What's all of that? So 1803 is the update for Windows, Microsoft Windows 10, that came out in April. 18 oh, that's the name of it. It's, it's a, yeah, it it's represents like a code name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Oh, okay. So 18 .0, or 1809, I say point. Uh, 1809 was released early October. Yeah. When Microsoft released it. It deleted files on people's computers and broke profiles. Oh, okay. So then they pulled it three days yeah. later. They re-released it and yeah. said, okay, we fixed that. Yeah. But then it blue screened HP computers. Oh, so they okay, couldn't boot their computer. Yeah. So then they re-released. Yeah. <laughs> and now <laughs> we've got all these other yeah, issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, okay, now you're losing files when you extract a zip file and, right. and everything okay. else. And Unicode and brightness control is not working. And... Right. Can you imagine if you aren't Robbie and you haven't backed up your files in a hundred different places mm. and then you delete a file thinking that you've extracted it properly and they've it lost it. It could just it. be really frustrating. And, and the other yeah. place that that's annoying is a lot of us these days use um, LTE internet. Right. So we pay for the bandwidth that we're using. So if I download a giant file mm -hmm. and extract it and expect that it extracted because it looked like it went through, and then I delete the zip file, and maybe it was too big for my trash bin, so it just is gone. Yeah. Oh, now i got to download it again, and I have to pay again for that download. Wow. Uh, so it's yeah. a whole, you know, the Microsoft doesn't seem to think about that. When they rolled out the Windows 10 update, they didn't care that it cost me $400 to wow. get it through my LTE connection. Right, exactly. Too bad they don't have a testing team. It probably would be a good idea. I would say. Mm-hmm. Linux founder Linus Torvalds has returned from a month of reflection to his job as chief developer of the widely used operating system. Mr. Tolvads sto sto stepped back pardon me, from heading the core development of Linux following accusations of bullying and rudeness. He sought professional help to curb his abrasive side and to develop empathy with the Linux community. His return comes as Linux coders adopt a code of conduct, conduct that seeks to make the community more welcoming. Mr. Tolvad, Tolv, I cannot Torvalds. Say, cannot say his name <laughs> today. Mr. Tol, <laughs> Torvalds. Torvalds. If, if we just edit it in such a way that every time you say Mr., I say Torvalds. That's perfect. Nobody that will works. notice. Tol, Tolvald. Nobody I will notice. <laughs> <laughs> so he... <laughs> said he was not a people person, but was taking time off to develop his, the interpersonal skills required by the role as the Linux figurehead. Before taking the short sabbatical, Mr. Torvalds was, <laughs> was known for giving forthright feedback, often in the form as, of expletive-filled emails to contributors. Mr. Torvalds said he doubted that he would ever be cuddly, but could improve the way he handled people. The code of conduct adopted by the larger Linux community asks developers to use welcoming and inclusive language, be respectful of differing viewpoints and experiences, gr it gracefully accept constructive criticism, focus on what is best for the community, and show empathy towards other community members. It also lists unacceptable behavior, which includes sexualized imagery and language, as well as trolling and personal attacks. It calls on key developers, including Mr. Torvalds, to police the code and live up to its standards. Mr. Torvalds developed the first version of the Linux operating system while studying at the University of Helinski, Finland in 1991. Since then, the free OS has become hugely popular across the web and in many industries. I wasn't ready for it, but it's Helsinki. Helsinki. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. yeah, I find it amazing that 
a man who has inspired so many yes has to back up and like i i know he's he claims not to be a people person and i understand yeah, that but yeah. but when you think so he's an abrasive person that's right. his personality type mm-hmm. right and he's possibly got anger issues and things like that yeah but he as that person has inspired thousands and thousands and thousands of other people to have a very big community mindset maybe yeah. maybe it's like he has created something and because he gave it away for free he's inspired people who are really more community minded and more friendly to work with it yeah. and it's hard to know that's the thing i feel like with people who have achieved a lot within society though they tend to get idolized and then maybe any, yeah. any small and i'm not saying that that's small but any aspect of their personality that isn't in keeping with a great leader yep. or mm-hmm. that kind right. of thing gets really skewered and i'm not i'm not saying that he shouldn't be like repaired repaired or whatever <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, Fix I'm, not, him. yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying that i think that probably more appropriate like he should probably just find someone else to do that kind of work the, the that's possible for yeah him because it's just not his forte right yeah. it sounds like right. he's doing some harm Right. Domain. Yeah, he likely didn't have to develop his empathy very much while he was busy developing right. an operating system that yeah. is yeah. rocking. And like <laughs> some people, like you, you just meet some people and they don't have that capacity. They just have mm-hmm. a completely different way yeah. of looking at people, and so it's difficult to change just using sure. training or a two-week seminar or something like that. I feel like it's that's the challenge. Yeah. I think it's important for us as as a uh, Linux using community as well to realize and and any community. Mm-hmm. You don't have to be a stellar person to be really good at something. Mm-hmm. Right. And he di- he didn't ever I I think it, it must be hard on him right now because people are coming down on him because of his personality type mm. right and i may not agree with it and i may not mm-hmm. mirror that type of behavior maybe mm-hmm. sometimes when the kids are being bad I, you know but well i i feel like he probably didn't intend harm even in when he was mm-hmm. sending those emails like it wasn't the fact that he it's just aggressive response exactly. like reactionary response exactly but i don't think that he like his actions and his intentions didn't meet up completely in sure. my in my mind right but thinking so think of that quote so sasha just said his actions and his intentions didn't line up when he created linux did he intend for it to become the world's most used operating system and right. and for him to be the figurehead of this giant community organization right I don't think that was his intention. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's kind of kept out of the spotlight in that, you know, he's he's very much a behind closed doors kind of guy. Yeah. yeah. But cross him. Right. And he'll show his true colors. I would say really lucky for him. Linux users, the community of Linux users they're they're so warm and so sure, empathetic yeah. and so supportive that the fact that he stepped away for a month and worked on it himself mm-hmm. even if he were to show some like future blunders and maybe failings in that regard he'll be forgiven you know sure i mean yeah. as long as he practices some of the tools he's been given yeah i think it's important though that we not expect someone to change who they are i i want you know, it's, it's good, though, that they're right. laying out policies and mm-hmm. saying, okay, we're not going to have sexism. We're not going to have um, people being treated poorly or being reprimanded right. for, like, even if someone made a mistake. Right. I mean... We can't I'm, react like that. I'm a little bit of a, like a delicate flower when it comes to feedback. You have to really sandwich your criticisms with, like, a positive then sure. the negative, then the positive, or else I just come away feeling, like, ridiculously wounded and I'm... It's, and it's not intentional, it's, probably, by the person. Exactly. Yeah. Some people are just like, you did that wrong. And I'm like, oh. right. <laughs> What do you mean? Yeah. I feel like I could not be Mr. Tor- Torvalds? Yeah. Personal assistant. <laughs> oh, sure. Like that yeah. would not be a good job for me. So we'll see how he does in the next little while. But let's not be too hard on the guy. Like, yeah. we're all human and we all <laughs> have our own way of handling things. And if that's the kind of person he is, unfortunately, we just kind of stay away and let him yeah, stay away yeah. let him stay away let him yeah. kind of work behind closed doors because mm-hmm. he's good at what he does mm-hmm. he's really good at what he yeah. does 
Dyson, the UK-based company best known for its vacuum cleaners, has chosen to build its new electric car in Singapore. The company will break ground on its new factory in Singapore later this year with the first car scheduled to roll off the production line in 2021. Dyson said the decision was based on the availability of engineering talent, regional supply chains and proximity to some key target markets. Cost was not a consideration. Singapore is one of the most expensive territories in the world to do business and space for manufacturing is at a premium in the city-state. Dyson has not yet revealed what kind of batteries its new car will use or, whether or where they will be made. Dyson continues to develop both solid-state and traditional lithium-ion batteries in parallel. The company currently has 1,100 employees in Singapore, 1,300 in Malaysia, 1,000 in China and 800 in the Philippines. Yet another manufacturer bringing out electronic cars. Yes. And I, I'm, I have said it before and I'll say it again. I'm so excited to see what the Dyson car will look like because Dyson vacuums are <laughs> amazing. Hold on tight, folks. It's going to be gonna... one giant vacuum cleaner on It's wheels, a whirlwind. Right? Yeah, whirlwind. <laughs> and it's, it's actually kind of fun and tongue-in-cheek that it's an electric car, which is very clean. And Dyson is a cleaning, yeah. known for its cleaning. Interesting that they didn't in any way consider I, I'm, sh I'm thinking they didn't in any way consider mm. the expensive aspect of Singapore of Singapore yeah whereas yeah, yeah. all these other companies are going to these other right go where it's cheapest yeah where labor's cheap where rent is cheap or leasing is cheap no right. let's go to the most expensive place in the world right to do manufacturing what's it going to cost for me to buy myself a Dyson car oh <laughs> good thought <laughs> yeah 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 they're expensive vacuums. They're expensive. Yeah, that's true. But they're good vacuums. I wonder with the purchase of a car if you get a Dyson vacuum. That would be cool. Maybe you could hook it up to the exhaust pipe. Maybe. There is no exhaust pipe, so they've utilized that as a that's central right. vac jack. That's right. It would be perfect. <laughs> a 16-year-old boy from California was the surprise winner of the grand final of the classic Tetris World Championship in Oregon. The iconic block stacking computer game is 13 years older than him. Joseph Sa Saley dethroned seven-time tournament winner Jonas Nebauer. The young man had only started playing as a hobby after watching the championship in 2016. Wow. He plays for a couple of hours each day on an original 1985 Nintendo Entertainment System console hooked up to an old CRT TV rather than a modern flat screen. He said that he prefers using the old-fashioned monitor because there's less latency, which is a tiny time difference between the controller and the visual. He said, my friends are like, what is this guy playing? And like a retro gaming evangelist explains to them that Tetris is easy to learn but can take years to master. Mr. Saley intends to take part in the competition again next year. 16 years old. Um, yeah. I love it. Retro is making a comeback. I am so bad at Tetris. I want to be good at it. I love it so much. I am just, like, I'm a panicky button masher, oh, yeah? so I will never be part On of it. On Category 5 Technology TV last week, we, we created our own Tetris machine. That's right. An Odroid Go. It's like a, it looks like a smaller version of a Game Boy, mm -hmm. but you can put Game Boy games on it, Nintendo oh, wow. Entertainment System games. So I actually have the original Tetris in NES on that. Right. And I've been playing it along with Dr. Mario. Oh, wow. Because both of those are fantastic So you games. could be the next champion. I'll work on that. I don't know, Sasha. It's an easy game to learn, but it takes years to master. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if he plays with the music on. Definitely. Yeah. You have to. You have to. I, I think so. Yeah. I wonder the, if that's part of the competition, like if they have that, like the mm -hmm. music on at the same time. That'd be amazing. I got to watch that. Yeah. I'm sure it's online. What was that? There was just that movie and I love it so much. And it was the re virtual reality. Oh, Ready Player One. Yes, right. Right? So I feel like this is, he's that guy, right? That is just the master of retro games at an mm. incredibly young age when the game itself is you know, like 13 years older than him. And how old is he? He's 14, is that? 16. Right? He's 16, right. Ugh, that's crazy. My kids, like my daughter is our oldest and she's 13 and, and they're really becoming more and more into retro games. And, and not only retro games like from our childhood, but um, they're also playing games that are made to look like 
are retro games. That's funny. Like Undertale, for example. Like, it looks a lot like a game out of the early 80s. Right. Something you play on ColecoVision or something like that. Mm -hmm. So they're bringing it back, not only the retro games, but the styles of retro games. Uh, Minecraft was another good example. Yeah. It's very much like, an, uh, like a late 80s, early 90s kind of look to it. Right. Just Beyond the like lens flares and things. Yeah, but blocky and pixelated yeah. and just... Everything's yeah. based on a, a grid system instead of, you know... Yeah, Some of the cool. fresher, newer games and, mm -hmm. yeah. So I we'll like see it. what else comes out. Yeah, congratulations. And you're like playing VR, so it's like you're yeah, way on the, on the other, other side. side of the spectrum. Exactly. Yeah. But I bet you there'll be some VR games that end up looking exactly like that. Like I could be... That'd be amazing. Ex could you imagine if you could play D&D... In, in virtual reality, in like 2D right. space. So like it's, everything is there in 3D, but it's a 2D character a 2D, coming at you. Exactly. That's, that's going to happen now. It probably oh. already has happened. I'll go home I and want look like, it up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I want to see that. I want to play that. I'm kind of on the opposite end of that spectrum. Like a, a while back, I was buying a CD player mm -hmm. for like just like a portable CD player. And I went into a, a Sony store. Yeah. And I was like, that's the one. And it was actually like an exhibit from like the 1990s. Oh. And I was like, no, oh. I'm so out of it. I went into an antique shop yeah. and there were things in the antique shop from my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh. seriously? Yeah. I, I was talking to Dave the other day. I remember the end of eight tracks. I remember the mm -hmm. beginning and end of cassettes. Records have made a comeback, which yeah. is good. It's coming around, and yeah. CDs are a thing of the past. Like, I feel like everything is I know. gone. And now we're seeing more and more stores <laughs> pulling CDs from the shelves. DVDs right. even. DVDs yeah. are being pulled from the store shelves. Right. We have a, a 3D TV, and they are, like, extinct now. We have... No. Yeah, we went to the store to buy some 3D glasses, and, and the guy said, like, you might as well buy up the whole stock because we're not... They're, there are no more 3D TVs mm. being oh, wow. manufactured. Hmm. That's a thing of the past. Is it because people are switching to Oculus Rifts and things like that? I don't where know. Where you can actually look around? Well, I've wondered about that like in movie theaters because they have 3D as an option most mm -hmm. of the time, but most of the time it's not really doing very much at all. It's very. It's, it's a it subtle like effect. A phase that just kind of went in yeah. where it was like, yeah, I want to see like mm -hmm. darts going by my head like while I'm watching a movie, but right. now it's like... It's just kind of an additional feature that you mm -hmm. pay more for. Right. I, think. Mm -hmm. I love ours. I found though that like with the more recent um, movies, you like you, th it's depth in the 3D screen versus things coming out at you, right? When you put the right. 3D glasses okay. on, you feel oh. like you can see further. So you in. see like cool. the horizon looks like you're looking out over the horizon, it, which is neat. Yeah, I wish they. I wish that the technologies wouldn't just be bygones. Yeah, but Tetris. Yeah. Lives on. Tetris lives on, folks. <laughs> Big thanks to Roy W. Nash and our community of viewers for submitting stories to us this week. Thanks for watching the Category 5.tv newsroom. Don't forget to like and subscribe for all your tech news with a slight Linux bias. And for more free content, be sure to check out our website. From the Category 5.tv newsroom, I'm Sasha Rickman. And I'm Robbie Ferguson. And I'm Shizu. Thanks, everybody, for being here with us this week. That's all the time that we have. Hope you've had fun. And uh, we will talk to you again next week. See ya.